Hello, I'm Luke Ross for MixingLight.com and welcome to the third insight in this Baselight beginner series. This insight is all about the Baselight user interface. So we're going to break down how Baselight is structured. So we're going to look at hosts, jobs, and scenes. We're going to have a look at Baselight's default workspaces and docked views. We're going to work out how to customize that ourselves. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go up to the views and I'm going to go to the job manager. So you can see that there are three columns. We've got the host column, we have the job column, and we have the scene column. So the hosts should display all of the base sites that you have available on your network. Um, so in our case, we just have this iMac, so we only have one local host base site. So within your local base site, uh, you can have jobs. So you can think of jobs as projects. As you can see, I've got a mixing light tutorials job, but if I had a music video project or something coming up, I could go ahead click this cog, create new job, and go music video name, right? So now I've got this brand new job, um, which I can create my scenes in. So on this far right hand column here, I'll go back to my mixing light tutorials. So uh, within our job, you can see we have a scene. A scene can be thought of as a timeline. So it's not a particular scene from a feature film or anything like that. It is just a standard timeline uh, where you can have your project. So the job manager isn't like a folder structure. You can't see this anywhere on your uh, Mac OS system. It's all self-contained within this database and the job manager is just the way to browse this database. So just bear that in mind, but if you ever do need to uh, export or import projects, uh, you can do that via the settings menu here in the job manager. For now, we're just gonna go ahead and right click and duplicate the scene and we're gonna call this three base light. UI and hit OK. And we're going to double click the scene to open. Cool, and we'll close that. So this is Baselight. I'll just adjust the timeline here and skip forward a few clips. The media that I'm going to use for this series is from the short film Mother Died, uh, which is actually available for purchase and download from Mixing Lights website as a practice project. Um, so yeah, if you want to uh, have some footage to play with, definitely go ahead and purchase that practice project. So before we dig into any of this uh, user interface, let's just quickly go up to the views menu again. And if we go down here, you can see that we're in the standard workspace view. So we've got an option to create new workspaces and to manage what we have currently. Um, I'm gonna leave it in the standard work view, but I am gonna tweak this uh, workspace. So a workspace is just a collection of docked views. Uh, so these are the standard most uh, key docked views that it's given us here, but we're gonna modify it a little bit. So over here we have our histogram. So I'm gonna hit control on the keyboard and right mouse click and hide the histogram. And you can see the gallery is still here. So I'm gonna control right click and hide the gallery. Now that I've hidden the gallery and the histogram, I'm gonna add a set of scopes that I like to uh, look at while I'm grading. So I'm gonna hit Control, right click and insert an RGB parade. And I'm just gonna go ahead and shrink this RGB parade to a smaller size. So this is the way that I like to operate in Baselight and how I will be throughout this series. If I go up to the views here, you'll see that uh, this is workspace two. Um, so uh, if I ever wanted to get back to that, if I hit standard, this is a standard workspace. I can go ahead to the views and hit workspace two. And there's my customized workspace. So let's dig a little bit into the different parts of the user interface. So most obviously on the top right hand corner here, we have the image display. Uh, so this is normally on a dedicated reference monitor. So normally this won't be in your UI. Below the image display, we have the cut view, uh, which is a thumbnail representation of all of the shots in your film. I'm scrolling here with middle mouse button, click and hold. I mentioned in the second insight of this series that it's really important to have a mouse with a middle mouse button. That's very true for everything I'm about to show you. Uh, so make sure you have a mouse with a middle mouse button. A little side note here, you can actually hit command left click to navigate to any of these shots um, using the cut view. So that's command left click. Moving downwards, uh, we have the base light timeline. We have a set of clips from a short film laid out in the timeline here. Let's talk very quickly about some ways to navigate. If I click and drag using this blue cursor, I can scroll through the timeline. I can shift middle mouse button click. So this is hitting the middle mouse button. With shift held down, I can jump to points in the timeline. Using the Z key, I can jump back. Using the X key, I can jump forward. 
And a little tip about navigating this timeline, if I hold down the command key, hold down the middle mouse button, and drag to the right, you can see I can zoom horizontally. If I hold command, middle mouse button, drag to the left, I can scroll out. And if I hold command, middle mouse button, drag up, you can see that it fattens my clips. And if I drag down, it thins them up. So again, right, left, up, and down. That's the way to adjust the scaling in the timeline. Moving over to our left, this is our RGB parade that we added. But more importantly, over on the bottom left is our cursor view. So cursors are quite a unique thing to baseline. You can see that uh, when we drag our cursor in the timeline here, we've got a little one symbol. That one symbol represents this cursor one that we've got active. So the cursor has an interesting relationship with how we view our image on the screen. So um, as you can see in the cursor menu, we have our viewing format and we've got our viewing color space. So we'll dig into cursors uh, later on in this series. Uh, but just know that the settings that we have here in the cursor menu directly affect how we're viewing this image. So for example, if I change this viewing format uh, to a 239 to 1 format, so for example, DCI 2048 by 858, if I click this, you can see that our aspect ratio for this clip has changed. Uh, we're no longer viewing a 16 by 9 image, we're viewing a 239 to 1 image. So very drastically different. So it's really imperative that when you set up your project, you've got your cursors set up correctly for your project. So we're going to set this back at HD. Moving upwards, we've got some playback controls. Um, these are all pretty self-explanatory, but if you click on this cog, you can see that we can loop the current shot that we're on, and we can choose what loop mode this is, and we can also choose a playback speed here as well. To the right of the playback uh, controls, there are some specific controls to do with the cut view. We'll ignore them for now. And up the top left, there's a really important panel. This is called the parameters view. We can get ourselves a little bit more screen real estate by closing this disclosure triangle in the parameters view. So there's quite a lot to unpack in the parameters view here. So we'll start top to bottom. So you can see here up the top left, we have the name of our clip that's reflected down in the timeline. Uh, we've got the start and end time code in the timeline. Going over to our right, we've got the length of the clip. So it's four seconds and five frames long using this toggle you can change it to frame number if that's easier. So you can now see that this clip is 105 frames long, um, but I'm gonna change that back to time code. You can change the color of the clip. I'm gonna change that to bright red so you can see. This field here shows the file path of the clip you're hovering over. And uh, in the two sub panels below, in the geometry and the color space fields, we have two very important options, the input format and the input color space. These are arguably the most important settings in the parameters view, and we'll dig into them in future videos. Uh, but just know that the geometry tab, you should have the correct input resolution for your footage set here. And in the input color space, this should be the color space your clip has been shot in. This should be reflected here in the input color space. Jumping down to the frames sub panel, we have our frame rate here. Uh, we have our increment field here. I don't know why Baselight calls this an increment. You can think of it as a speed field. So uh, 1.0 uh, stands for 100% speed. If I change this to 0.5, that is half speed. And if I changed it to two, that's 200% speed. And you can see that uh, the media has gone offline because there's not enough frames to be running at 200%. So I'm gonna go ahead, change that back to 100% speed. You can also reverse your clip here. So that's a useful button to know about. All of this is interesting, but we won't touch on it for now. Also know, if we undo this disclosure triangle, we have an audio tab here for this clip, and we can also add more tabs by right-clicking in here, change operator type, and you can see there's all of these other operators that we can add uh, to this clip via the parameters view. I'm gonna click the sequence and hide this disclosure triangle again. Also, very important to note, um, the parameters view is contextual. So if I added a grade layer, so I'm gonna click my clip and hit the keyboard shortcut P, and now we have a grade layer, you can see the parameters view is no longer displaying my clip settings. You can see if I click it, it jumps back, but because I'm selecting my inside out grade layer, it is displaying the grading tools. And again, if I reveal this disclosure triangle, all of this has changed. So if I jump back and forth, um, the parameters view up the top left is very contextual. 
and now I can, you know, grade to my heart's content. Okay guys, and that is the Baselight user interface. The last thing I want to leave you with is, um, obviously we're working on one screen here because I'm recording these tutorials, um, but if you wanted to sort of float your uh, docked views um, and put them on other displays or just have them a little bit more flexible, you can do that as well. If you hit control, right click, you can see and you can float these docked views here and you can drag them about and you can um, adjust them to your heart's content, okay? So um, know that you can do that if that's your preference. I hope that's been helpful. We're gonna steam ahead uh, with these videos. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you want to know about the Baselight user interface, but we'll probably get to it in the future insights. So um, thanks for tuning in. For MixingLight.com, I'm Luke Ross.